Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment's notice, so much, so much is happening. So much time is going by, ticking, tocking of the clock. But he can't hear it. He can't hear it because the crowd is so loud. The crowd is drowning out any possible thought in his head. He has to concentrate. He has to concentrate because the moment is coming. Suddenly the ball is snapped. He has the ball. He has to make a split-second decision. He has to decide whether he's going to throw a hand it off. They've gone through the plays over and over and over again. He still has to decide. What seems like a forever to him is just a moment. He has to make that decision. He wipes the sweat from the brow. He throws it. Suddenly, what felt like sweet relief after throwing the ball crashes down as the ball is intercepted by the strong safety. Now, whether or not you're a football fan, you can imagine that pressure. Timing is everything. And no matter what sport you play, many things in life, timing is everything. If you play basketball, that split-second shot. If you play tennis, if you're just a second late, you'll miss the ball. Regardless of a sport or not, though, so many things in our life are bound to time. So many things in our life are controlled by time. Think about how many schedules we set every day. We make appointments months and months in advance. Think about the, what's been in the news lately. 2012, the movie, the Mayan calendar has been the focus of people's minds, people's scheduling. We make time such an important thing. Timing is everything. And think about it in your own lives. Maybe, like I said, you're not a sports fan or a sports fanatic. But what if the timing is off just a moment in your car? The cylinders aren't firing right at the right time. Well, it might not start. Or it might burn too much gas or too little gas and stall out. Or maybe, if cars are not your thing and sports are not your thing, what about cooking? You set a pot roast. It's supposed to sit all day. But there's certain timing. If you wait too long, it's dried out. It's a piece of shoe leather. Too short, everybody gets sick. Timing seems to be everything. It seems to be a way that we try to control the chaotic world around us. We set schedules. We, make, we fit things in to appointment calendars. And yet, it all crumbles. Most of the time, our schedules, well, something happens. Think about yourself. You set an appointment, but then you get stuck in traffic. So you're a few minutes late. And you say something like, oh, if only I was a minute earlier, I wouldn't have missed my flight. Or what about if I was a minute later? A minute later and I would have been hit by that semi as it was crossing the, crossing the intersection. Think about it. There's many things in our lives that are tied to timing. And a calendar this year, this evening, is one of those things. As we celebrate New Year's, it's a time of moving from one year to the next. Observing, celebrating time, really. But it can be really frustrating when things don't fit in to your schedule. When things don't fit into the timing you've set. Especially if you're like me and you have a type A personality. Now, if you've seen my car or seen my desk, you would not believe it. But let me go ahead and unpack that a little. It's an idea that came about in the 1950s by some psychiatrists who probably had too much time on their hands. And they said there were two types of people, type A and type B. And I'm sure there was a mix of that somewhere in between. But type A are those people, usually their desks are spotless. They're neat. They're orderly. Even when you look at the time for them, they're those people who, when you're sitting there, they would say, to the, say, early is on time, and on time is late. Well, then you have, on the other end of the spectrum, the type B personality. These are the people who see appointments as suggestions, maybe 15 minutes on either side up to an hour on either side of the appointment. You might walk into their office and wonder how they can get any work done because you can't find anything in the pile. Well, if you don't like the idea of type A, type B personality, that's okay because it's been countless times critiqued and corrected over the years. But the point is, whether or not time is the main focus for you, type A or type B, 
where time is something that guides you. We all have time, times that we set aside, times that we try to schedule things. And like I said, New Year's is a time where we celebrate the new year coming in, the old one passing away. We celebrate the gift that God has given us of another year of life. And in amidst our celebration, at least for me and maybe for some of you, well, there's also a sense of sadness. A sense of sadness because you realize, at least I realize and you probably realize, Christ has not come back again yet. It makes you look around and say, God, is, is your timing off a little bit here? Another year that although we celebrate the blessings of life, we just can't help but long for Christ's second coming. Because we know what that means. We know that it's going to be the time where our tears are wiped away, where we have joy, where we have celebration. It's not going to be the time anymore where we go through the difficulties of this life. And sometimes I imagine we even ask God, God, haven't you had enough yet? Come on, enough is enough. And you can almost imagine him looking down and finally saying, that's right, it is enough. There's so much evil in this world, it's time to stop it. But he hasn't said that yet. And so maybe we look at that and say, God, is your, is, your, is your timing off just a little? Just like that quarterback's timing. Though his quarter, maybe his timing wasn't off. Maybe it was just that the receiver was off, but... We might ask that question of the timing and say, God, is, is there something just a little bit off here? And I think, no, I believe that the reason God hasn't chosen to come back yet is because while he has, while we have this, well, short-term picture, I mean, imagine we're just a speck in the whole plan of things. He has the big picture. And I believe that there's people yet who have not heard the gospel. It's hard to imagine in our world today where we have TV and internet, where we have everything under the sun that people should be able to hear the good news. But I believe there are people who have not heard that gospel message that Jesus came, that he came in the fullness of time as a Savior. And so I think that God, I believe that God is waiting. And he's waiting until everybody has heard that good news. That he's waiting until all people have had a chance to receive his Holy Spirit. And he's waiting for all people to celebrate, to come with joy. And then he will send his son to come to joy. Here, as you listen to the psalm, Psalm chapter 90, verse 2. From everlasting to everlasting is our God. That is such a comforting phrase. Because while the most of that psalm was kind of, well, kind of a lot of law. Right there, everlasting to everlasting is our God. It reminds us that God does see the big picture. That He's been around from the beginning. He's around now and He'll be around in the future. And He sees all of us. He sees all of the needs we have. And He knew the first time, the perfect timing to send Jesus. Consider what Paul says in Galatians 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law and to give them the right of sonship and daughtership. God, God at that point, brought us in, invited us in to His kingdom. He brought us to that salvation. He knew the perfect time to send Jesus the first time. And he knows the perfect time to send Jesus again. That will be when all have heard the good news. So as we celebrate this new year, we go forth with a charge. First, knowing that God has all in his control. That everything is set according to his timing. Second, that there's a lot of people who need to hear that good news. That there's a lot of people who need to know that Jesus is their Savior. Everlasting to everlasting, Jesus is our God. He is our Redeemer. He is the one who has saved us. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious God in heaven, we thank and praise you 
for sending your son Jesus into our lives. We thank you that you sent him forth to bring us the good news, to bring us salvation. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you have looked upon us with favor, that you knew when was the perfect time, that you came as that little baby in Bethlehem. Help us to always remember that you, that the reason you came, the reason when you come again will be because you love us. And that love was the love that you, that you had for us when you came as a baby. That love is the love that you had for us when you died on the cross to redeem us of all of our sins. May that love always be part of our lives. As we go forth in this new year, Lord, may you guide and direct us. May we go forth in your word. Amen. We now continue with our New Year's offering, thanking the Lord for the blessings He's given us this year and looking forward to the new year ahead.